back with another review and today we're going to talk about review Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid uh, which stars Paul Newman you also have Robert Redford in the film directed by George Roy Hill and I got this uh, blu-ray for Christmas and I did like the film I mean it was a first time watch for me now you know when this came out I mean it was the biggest film of the year I mean it won four Oscars I mean it won Oscars for Best Story and Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Best Original Score, um, you know, Best Song for Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. Uh, it was nominated for Best Picture, nominated for Best Director and Best Sound. Uh, the Writers Guild of America uh, ranked the screenplay number 11 on its list of 101 greatest screenplays ever written. You know, so it's, it's a film that's held in high regard. And, you know, it's considered a classic. I think right now on IMDb, it sits at an eight. Um, Rotten Tomatoes uh, gives it 88%, and that's according to Wikipedia. I don't know if it's still that right now. Um, so, again, it's a film that a lot of people, you know, hold in high regard. And, like I said, I did like the film. I mean... You know, the story here, uh, it's the early 1900s, Wyoming, and you have our two main leads in the film, you know, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and they lead, you know, this band of outlaws, and after a train robbery, you know, goes wrong, they find themselves on the run from this posse. And the only solution is to get to Bolivia. So, you know, throughout the film, they're being pursued by this group that's trying to turn them in. And uh, like I said, you know, the two main characters are on the run. And that's basically the story here. Now, the film is directed by George, George Roy Hill. Now, this is the same director that would do uh, later on The Sting. Uh, he would direct uh, Slapshot with Paul Newman. And he, the last film he directed was Funny Farm with Chevy Chase. Yeah, that's the last film he ever directed. And he didn't direct a whole lot. You know, when I was looking at his filmography, he didn't direct a whole lot. He, you know, directed a few films, but, you know, I would say more notably, um, the ones he's known for is this film, uh, The Sting. And I do like Funny Farm with Chevy Chase. It's just weird how... You know, like, you know, Funny Farm is a totally different film. It's pretty much a straightforward comedy. And again, I do like the movie. You know, it's a fun movie. Um, but, yeah, same director. Uh, the writer, William Goldman, if that's the name you heard before, uh, this guy who would go on to write the, sc uh, the screenplays for, you know, All the President's Men, Marathon Man, A Bridge Too Far, The Princess Bride, uh... Heat and other screenplays. So, I mean, again, you know, Bridge Too Far, The Princess Bride, Heat. You know, so, you know, this screenwriter has gone on to write many screenplays uh, for many other movies that are considered classics. And, yeah, so I wanted to mention, you know, director and writer. You know, the cast here... Again, Paul Newman, Robert Redford. You got to think at this time, you know, these are two big names. And, you know, they're two great actors. And you have them here in the same movie. And I thought they worked well off each other. I thought they had a really good rapport. You know, it's well acted. Uh, those two characters, those two actors do a really good job. The supporting cast, you have Catherine Ross in the film. Who plays the character of Veda. And I think in real life. She's married to Sam Elliott. Funny enough. Sam Elliott is in the film. Which I found out after the fact. But yeah. Sam Elliott has a bit part in the film. As card player number two. According to IMDB. So yeah. He's in the movie. You also have uh, Strother Martin. Uh, I don't know what else he's been in. You have Jeff Corey. Uh, he's in the film as the sheriff. Ted Cassidy, 
yeah, who would go on to be Lurch, who I think this is after Lurch, but he played Lurch and the Adams Family. He's in the film in a small part as part of the uh, gang, but yeah, it's cool to see him in there. And again, it's a small part for uh, Ted Cassidy. And so, yeah, I mean, again, you got some interesting people here in the cast. A couple of people you've seen before. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, uh, Cloris Leachman. Yes, yeah, you know, she's in the movie here. Yeah, Sam Elliott as car player number two. Which, again, I didn't catch the first time around, but... You know, I learned about that afterwards. But, you know, everybody from the cast and, you know, what really makes this film work, again, is the main two actors. You know, I mean, Paul Newman, great actor. Robert Redford, great actor. And throughout the film, you really, you know, you really get invested in their journey, you know, trying to outrun this posse. And it's like, you know, no matter how far they go, no matter how far they travel, you know, this posse is right behind them. They're right on their trail, day and night. <laughs> and I really enjoyed that throughout the movie. You know, especially when you get, like, in the middle portion of the film, you know, where it's like they're on the run. And you can definitely feel the exhaustion of these two characters trying to outrun this posse. And then they get to Bolivia a little bit later on. And that's where, you know, things start to, you know, change for their characters. But it gets to that point of, you know, they're really pushing it. And the, the film really sets that tone of, you know, they're maybe they're pushing it too much. They're pushing it too far. And, uh, there's even a moment in the third act where, you know, the girl is like, I'm ready to go back home. She knows that these guys are really, um, this is near the end. That, you know, they're pretty much being cornered. And if, you know, I mean, you know, for those people out there, you know, you know how the film ends. I don't really need to get into that. I mean, it's not much of a spoiler. Um, people know the film by now. Um, but... I mean, I think about, you know, let's say pros and cons or what have you with the film. I mean, like I said, I did like the film. Is this, let's say, a Western that is a favorite? Like, is this a favorite Western even for me? No, I prefer ones like Tombstone, Unforgiven, Young Guns, even Silverado, uh, which I, you know, I actually like. I would say... You know, I prefer that more um, because those to me, like even some of the Clint Westerns, I mean, you know, the thing is with those, those movies feel like more straightforward Westerns. And that's not to say this is not straightforward, but, you know, the thing with this movie here that there are some, you get a little bit of humor once in a while and one moment in particular it's not really funny, but I thought it was very, uh, very weirdly placed in the film. I, the scene where, you know, Paul Newman's on the bike and you get that song, Raindrops, Keep Falling on Their... I want to get the name of the song. Yeah, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, which I like the song. You know, to me, it's a good song, but it doesn't fit with the movie. It just... It just feels out of place for, you know, this film, which takes place in the early 1900s. You know, it's it's set out in the West. And you have raindrops keep falling on my head in the movie where Paul Newman is on the bike with the girl. And again, you know, that little moment just felt very odd. Like, again, this song, you know, this film is trying to be serious at times, but... When this song pops up, it just, for me, it was very oddly uh, put. It just really put me off uh, with the tone of the movie. Again, I, it's like I like the song, but, you know, what is this song doing in the movie? It just doesn't really fit. If it's, if, it'd be one thing if it was like a romantic comedy or, 
you know, a comedy or romance film. But you, know, you think about that song, does it really work in any kind of Western? If it's a straightforward Western, to me, it doesn't. I mean, I get, you know, that this film has, you know, one or two moments of, you know, who, you know, humor uh, between the two leads, you know, where they're making a joke or what have you, you know, so you got a little bit of that in the movie between the two main actors, you know, where you get a little bit of fun rapport. I get that. But, you know, maybe I think my thing with this film that you know, what if it just worked as, let, let's say, a straightforward Western? Um, and because, again, that's why I say this is not a favorite of mine when it comes to the genre. I'd rather watch Tombstone more, Unforgiven more, Young Guns more, Silverado more. You know, some of the other Clint Pell Rider. You know, I'd rather watch that more. But... I mean, that's that's the thing I would say as far as the negatives. I mean, the pacing didn't bother me. I mean, the film is 110 minutes, but I, it didn't bother me at all. The cinematography is great. I love the landscapes, especially, you know, of this time period. Everything was real. Landscapes were real. Everything felt authentic. You know, when it comes to this type of movie. I mean, you know, just recently I watched... The Wild Bunch, you know, great Western. In fact, it came out the same year, and I prefer that a little bit more. I prefer The Wild Bunch more than this movie. And I'm not, you know, dogging on this movie, but that for me felt more like a straightforward, down and dirty Western. And maybe that helps that, you know, Sam Peckinpah directed it. Uh, but, you know, this movie here, Again, great cinematography. The cast, everyone does a great job. Paul Newman, Robert Redford, good chemistry. The middle part, you know, I really enjoyed. The middle, if you want to say, second act of the film, where they're on the run, and they're always looking behind their shoulders, you know, because day and night, they're being tracked, and they can't catch a break. And you feel that with these two characters, that they can't catch a break, you know, they're getting, they're getting exhausted. And by the third act, when they get to Bolivia, you know, they think, oh, it's going to be this place so that we can hide and blend in. But it's kind of a, you know, kind of a dump. Um, you know, it doesn't turn out the way they thought. So it's kind of like, you know, the, you know, the end is there. Like, you can see the end coming for these two characters. Um... But, yeah, so, I mean, the features on here, I was just, I uh, might as well mention the features. You do have a commentary up here by the director, documentary. Uh, okay, so you got a commentary up here with the director, documentary director, and cinematographer. A commentary by the screenwriter. Uh, you have a documentary, a featurette. Deleted scenes with optional director's commentary. So, you know, you got some good stuff up here. If you're looking, if you're a sucker for that kind of stuff. But, you know, all in all, I say Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It's a good movie. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm not going to... It's not going to be... A, it's not going to be a film that I'm going to rewatch often. Like, I respect the movie. I respect the performances. But for me, I just prefer other Westerns. And again, even the same year, you had The Wild Bunch, which I prefer more. Uh, you know, there's some moments that, you know, I think doesn't really belong in the film. Like, you know, the song Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. And I know I keep stressing about that, but it was just very oddly put in there. Cinematography is great. I don't mind the score. It's a well-shot movie. I mean... You know, the two leads really, you know, keep the film moving and they really, you know, drive the movie. So, yeah, a good flick. Uh, one that I respect, but, you know, maybe for me, it's not a favorite when it comes to this genre. So, 
that's my review of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Thank you for watching my review, and I will see you later. For those who are interested, if you would like to help out with the channel, I'll provide links uh, down below in the description uh, for PayPal and Patreon. Uh, PayPal is for requested content. If you would like to request, you know, for example, movie reviews, commentaries, discussions, topics, and more, you know, I'll put that down below. Anything you want to donate there. And for Patreon, uh, right now it's just uh, for crediting. And that is $1 a month. Uh, so there's a couple of ways. Uh, or you can do both. It's totally up to you. Uh, but just wanted to mention that. Um, also, my Twitter. I'll put a link to that down below if you want to follow me there too. But thank you for watching. And I will see you later.